What's going on guys? Justin here and welcome back to our 18th example video following our course on proof writing. Now today's example video is going to be on functions. So let's go ahead and get into our first example. So for this one we are going to consider the set f which is defined as the set of ordered pairs x and y which are both integers such that 2x plus y is equal to 3 and we first want to verify that this is in fact a function f from z to z and then we want to see if it's injective and if it's surjective. So first let me go ahead and write out the criteria that we need to meet in order for this to qualify as a function. Okay so in order to be a function uh, which we'll denote as f from a to b we need for every a in a there's exactly one b in b such that the ordered pair a b is in f. So in order to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and note that for all x and y, which are integers, 2x plus y equals 3 is always going to output an integer. No matter what we plug in for x and y, we will always get an integer, which is all we need to demonstrate that f is a function. So thus, f is a function. Specifically, it is a function from z to z. And now that we know this is a function, let's go ahead and rewrite our function in the following way, where we have f of x is equal to 2x minus 3, just to make it easier to work with in the future. So now let's talk about injectivity. So to prove injectivity, we're going to suppose we have f of x is equal to f of y, and then we want to show that x is equal to y. So let's go ahead and write out that setup. So suppose we have two integers, x and y, such that f of x is equal to f of y. Well, that means we have the following. We will have 2x minus 3 is equal to 2y minus 3. And we can add 3 to both sides to see that 2x is equal to 2y, which of course means that x is equal to y. So that's all we need to do to prove injectivity. So let's go ahead and get into surjectivity. So to prove surjectivity, we want to show that for all b and b, which is our codomain, we have an a and a such that f of a is equal to b. Or in other words, all of the elements in our codomain can be mapped to by our function. So this is actually not a surjective function. So I'm going to claim the following, that there does not exist an x in the integers such that f of x is equal to 2. So let's go ahead and prove that. So we're going to set f of x equal to 2, which means that 2x minus 3 is going to equal 2, and then we're going to add 3 to both sides, and that will give us that 2x is equal to 5. But we can see right away that that is a contradiction, as we can't multiply an integer by 2 and get 5. So that means that there does not exist an integer x such that f of x is equal to 2, which means that this is not surjective. So we'll, I'll go ahead and write not surjective. Great, so this function was injective but not surjective. So let's go ahead and get into our next one. All right, so for this one, we have a piecewise function, which we have defined in the following way. We have a function from z to z, which is defined by f of n is equal to n plus 1 if n is even, and n minus 3 if n is odd. So let's go ahead and talk about injectivity first. So because this is a piecewise function, we're going to need to break it into cases. So for this one, our first case will be when n is even. So if n is even, we have our function f of n is equal to n plus 1. And now we want to suppose that f of x is equal to f of y for some integers x and y. Well, that means that we have x plus 1 is equal to y plus 1, which we can very easily see means that x is equal to y. So in that case, we are good. So the next case we want to test is when n is is odd. So if n is odd, f of n is going to be equal to n minus 3. And now we want to suppose that we have, once again, f of x equal to f of y for x and y in the integers. Well, that means that we'll have x minus 3 is equal to y minus 3. And just like before, that very easily shows that x is equal to y. 
Now we have to consider one last case, which is when x is even and y is odd. So we have x even, y odd. But we still have f of x is equal to f of y. So in that case, we would have x plus 1 is equal to y minus 3, which would mean that x is equal to y minus 4. But I want you to recall that y is odd. And if y is odd, if we subtract 4 from it, we will still have an odd number. And since x is stated to be even, we have arrived at a contradiction. This is not a possible case. And since we've proved our other two cases are true, that means this function is injective as this third case is not possible. So now let's talk about surjectivity. So just like before, we're going to be breaking this up into cases. So let's begin by supposing b is an integer to start with. So for our first case, we're going to have b is even. And if b is even, we can observe that b plus 3 will be odd. So from there, we're going to let a equal b plus 3. That means that f of a will equal b plus 3 minus 3, which equals b. So that takes care of our even cases for b. So now let's talk about when our b is odd. So when b is odd, we'll know that b minus 1 is even. So then we'll let a equal b minus 1. But that means that f of a is equal to b minus 1 plus 1 which is just equal to b. So no matter what, if b is even or if b is odd, we can map to it. So that means this function is surjective. Great, so let's get into the next problem. So for this one, the function is also defined piecewise. We have a function from the integers to the integers that is defined by f of n is equal to n over 2 if n is even, and n plus 1 over 2 if n is odd. And we want to see if f is injective or surjective. So let's begin by considering the following case. So let's consider f of 1 and f of 2. Well, f of 1, since 1 is odd, is going to be equal to n plus 1 over 2, which is just 1. And f of 2, which is equal to 2 over 2, is going to be equal to 1 as well. So here we have a case where f of 1 is equal to f of 2. But obviously, 1 does not equal 2. So this function cannot be injective. So let's go ahead and write that not injective. Great. Now, for surjectivity, we can prove that very easily. All we want to prove is that our function can map to all of the integers. But I want you to go ahead and observe that for all m in the integers, f of 2m will equal m. So that proves surjectivity there. We can map to all integers using this method. Great, so this function is not injective, but it is surjective. So let's go ahead and get into our fourth and final example. So for this fourth and final example, we have a function defined which goes from r set minus just the singleton two to r set minus the singleton one, and the function is defined as f of x is equal to x minus two. And we wanna show that it is bijective, or in other words, we wanna prove that it is both injective and surjective. So just like we have been doing, let's look at injectivity first. So let's go ahead and suppose that f of x is equal to f of y for some x and y, which are in our domain, which is r minus the singleton 2. Great. Well, then that means that we have x over x minus 2 is equal to y over y minus 2. So let's go ahead and get rid of those denominators there, and we will get x times y minus 2 is equal to y times x minus 2. So let's go ahead and multiply that out. We'll get xy minus 2x is equal to xy minus 2y. And we can get rid of those xy's by subtracting, and then we'll get that negative 2x is equal to negative 2y, which of course means that x is equal to y. Great. So that proves that this function is injective, as we started with f of x is equal to f of y, and we were able to prove that that means that x is equal to y. We can see that this only works because our domain is r set minus the singleton 2, as if we plugged in 2 here, it would be undefined. 
Great, so let's go ahead and talk about surge activity now. So generally to prove surge activity, we start by doing a little bit of scratch work where we find a substitution for A that will make this proof work. So let me go ahead and work out that scratch work for you. So what we're gonna do is look at F of A is equal to B, and we want to solve for A. So let's go ahead and do that now. So plugging that in, we'll get A over A minus two is equal to B. So let's begin by clearing that denominator. That will give us A is equal to B times A minus two. And then we can multiply that out and we'll get that that is equal to B A minus two B. Now let's go ahead and move that B A over to the left hand side so that we can get all of our A terms on the same side. So that will give us A minus A B is equal to negative two B. Now we will factor out an A from our left hand side and that will give us A times one minus B is equal to negative two B. And we can see that by dividing by one minus b, we will have solved for a as we intended. So we'll get a is equal to negative two b over one minus b. So that is the value of a we are going to use for our proof. So let's go ahead and prove that this function is surjective. So let's begin by supposing b is in our codomain. So suppose that b is in r set minus the singleton one. And then we are going to let a equal what we have written just above there, a equal two b over one minus b. And now we're going to consider f of a. Well, f of a is going to equal negative two b over one minus b, all over negative two b over one minus b minus two. Great. So let me use this blue to indicate that we are gonna work with just the denominator for the moment. So let's go ahead and get a common denominator on our negative two there by multiplying by one minus b over one minus b. So that will give us negative two b minus two times one minus b all over one minus b. And we can multiply that out to get negative two b minus two plus two b. And these two b's will cancel and that will be all over one minus b. So we can rewrite our new fraction over here on the left. We will have negative two b over one minus b, and that will all be over negative two over one minus b. So let's go ahead and combine these two fractions here in the following way. We will have negative two b times one minus b over one minus b times negative two. And we can see that the one minus b's will cancel and the negative twos will also cancel and we will be left with just b. So we started with f of a and we showed that that is equal to b, which is what we want to prove to prove that this function is surjective. So this function is both surjective and injective, which means it is bijective. So that completes this proof. Great, and that's a good place to stop.